Yo, yo. Oh, we are hot. Thanks, Dave. All right. <laughs> we have a live studio. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, that's where it is. <laughs> I don't know. But it was with conviction. You said that with such conviction, I believed you. I felt it in my soul. How's that tequila, baby? It's almost gone. It's almost gone? You need a refill? Or did you empty the bottle? I emptied that old bottle. Oh, wow. Good job. Well, it was only a shot. Oh, I got you. That's all that was left in there. Mm, cool. It's okay. How you feeling today? I feel good. Yeah, we didn't have a chance to catch up with the house because it's been like back to back for us. Crazy pants. Crazy pants. But I think that's what keeps it like interesting. Like, ooh, what'd you do today? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Definitely keeps it interesting. Yeah. You have Fun. a yeah, you have a really dynamic equation on your occupational side, which is interesting. Keeps it interesting and fun. Oh yeah. There, I don't think for I don't me. really have a schedule. It's just yeah. the days I'm off, the days I'm on, and most days I'm on. <laughs> some days I'm on. And, and some days you know, I'm off. <laughs> some days I'm off. It's but like, most days. I don't really so have a schedule, days. and I sort of. Wow, it did sound like I a just, little shit. you know, <laughs> stand around while this. Young buff guy named Terrence takes videos and <laughs> pictures of me, and you know, you know we I'm surrounded about. by good-looking boys all day, oh, and wow. a girl who's got a crush on me too. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! <laughs> well, I, I sounded like that. Boys. I apologize, but um, no, I just mean it as like I'm grateful for that fact that I don't have a schedule and that it kind of just well, I do in my own right. Like I make my own. However, it's not held down unless I allow it to be. Which is great to have that flexibility when you're an entrepreneur or, you know, managing your own, running your own show. Yeah, I'm sorry. I can't take you seriously with Why, the costume babe? On. Why, babe? Are we having I'm a so serious? I'm sorry. I'm like looking at you. I'm like, yeah. And then I was about to embark on the fact that I've regaled about your beautiful like how how you take breaks in between your days like during your day so that you can work throughout the night which I think is very really cool and I love that you do that for yourself most people are like nine to five I work and that's it I'm not doing any more than that but I like that you you break it up but anyway I appreciate that can I, I just say like we're sitting here talking about work dressed up in costume like we're not dressed up in fucking costume I feel like I need I, to be jumping around like a like a wolf let's let's open this bitch up first. I was gonna that's why I was like laughing because I was about to like try to compliment you in that yeah, moment yeah, yeah. but then I'm looking at your face and I'm just like I can't compliment this can't heathen this, this heathen this guy did you just say this heathen yeah yeah so let me ask you what what are you baby I am a cat. I guess I'm a leopard. You're a feline. Of some sort. A feline. Of sort. But yes. a leopard, a very proper leopard. A very it was cute the last sexy. ears. Oh, thanks. Um, it was the last <laughs> ears. <laughs> right. See me scared, out. Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down or I'm going to e collar your ass. Like, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> Babe. Babe. What aren't you like a a dog? <clears throat> <laughs> all right, I'm a wolf. Okay, mm. babe, what are you? That first of all, you're I'm a like leopard. That. You're a leopard. I'm a feline. a feline leopard. Yes. Whoa! Did you have long fingernails on? Do you have claws? Holy sh! Holy sh! Nikes. You know, wow. it's it's to cut Achilles like this. <laughs> That's scary when you say that. I'm ninja fast. I'm a wolf, babe. Oh. From <laughs> Is that what that, hey, you take have, me seriously. I wolves had hey, take me seriously, okay? <laughs> I'm a wolf from the other world, babe. Which one? You look like you're like in transition. Like, have you ever seen a werewolf movie where the like it's like the hardest part when they're in transition? Like in the middle, it looks like it hurts like hell. Yeah, yeah. I look like I'm in pain. <laughs> Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> I will say the conversation is not getting any easier when you're telling me that I look like I'm in transition. First of all, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know well, what direction have or how to take that. Man lips. 
Whoa. Uh, <laughs> and dreadlocks. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, I'm totally in transition from another world. <laughs> what world is that? Not this one. Okay. <laughs> I'm serious. What world is that? What world would you be in a werewolf in? It's not would not. be I am, baby. I'm I'm in trend I'm literally in transition right now. Oh. I'm transcending going? from another world here to be with you guys. Unamused everyone is. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> he looked at both of them. Wait till later. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Wait till later. I'm a cat ambassador. Have you ever wondered? It's like challenge accepted. <laughs> have you ever wondered where those neighborhood cats go? <laughs> yeah. Ew, babe. Coyotes and wolves. I thought you were trying to be plant based. <laughs> no. It's an explicit lyrics episode. <laughs> Kids don't need to watch this. Aren't there were cats? There are. Yeah, I know, huh? Bro. So I'm passionate about this because I like exotic. I was going to say children. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. I call my cat my child. So yeah. please um, bear with me. Uh, but no, I've seen them and they look like werewolves and they are awesome. And I really wanted one, but it's fur. Wait. It's not hypoallergenic. What? I don't think. Can we? Okay. We're talking about an actual living animal that's a were panther. Bro, I'm going to like show you a photo. It's literally a naked cat with just a few like wiry hairs that around his face that makes him look like a werewolf. I'm not letting that in the house, babe. What's that? I'm, I don't think I would let that in the house. Bro. I'm just saying. I'm going to show you a photo and you're going to be like, mm, I like it. Mm. <laughs> so it's Halloween night. Yeah. People are dressing up. It's crazy. Yeah. It's cool. People have been doing it a long time. Halloween was, um, I believe, was a derivative of a Celtic tradition. Yeah. So tradition, when we think about that, it um, for us, our generation, or for the generations of, let's say, the last 100 years instead of, what is this, 2020? <laughs> instead mm -hmm. of the last 2,000 years, mm -hmm. right? So 2,000 years ago, roughly, give or, give or take 300 years, they, they being the pagans that started Halloween as we sort of understand it, that we would dress up on the, the evening of October the 31st because of a gateway that was opened between worlds. And that gateway being open... Uh, as I understand it, I'm being very vague, gateway, worlds, right? But where were the ghosts coming from? I did hear about this gate and how it allows in and out. So it's like an in and out, maybe up to heaven or something like that or whatever they believed in or where, you know. And But mostly it was always at the front end of a graveyard. And so I imagine the ghosts might come from the grave. I think it was the most obvious understanding of where the dead were yeah. is a graveyard for sure. And what I, th my takeaway, I don't know physically where it was, but a graveyard makes total sense. Mm -hmm. Totally makes sense. Yeah. Um, I found it most interesting, I guess, was a series of factors in this whole kind of Halloween equation because I started to think about tradition a lot. Whenever you start reading about history, you learn so much about yeah. your ancestors or the ancestors of others that you're floating around in space and time with right now. The interesting thing for me about the history of Halloween in this case was for the pagan beliefs anyway, and yet now all people kind of engage and participate now regardless of your belief oh yeah from a god's perspective or a spirit's perspective or a multi-world perspective etc cetera, etc cetera. like nowadays regardless so of your belief many different you go and get dressed up so you can go trick-or-treating or party for halloween like that's the western world's understanding uh and modern day western world understanding of halloween right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even the fact that we're even talking about it right now and dressed up like this in some capacity is proof of that. 
Oh yeah. Then, oh, yeah. and and so what I started to um, think about was our relation to two thousand year old uh, traditions, and how this is our version of a tradition then that they firmly believed that they were, they really believed that they were stopping or managing a situation that was a multi-dimensional world or universe. And that's why Halloween, like that kind of blows my mind. Mm -hmm. Halloween <clears throat> stems, the holiday that we're celebrating right now the basis of that is that we are dressing up to scare off and protect our people and our, our understanding of reality from a multidimensional world or system of worlds where other beings exist. That's the foundation of this holiday. But it doesn't mean that we don't still think that. I mean, others might have fun with it, but what if we are by no, dressing up? No doubt. But how many how many people in the population do you think are connected to that? Oh, not that many. That's my point. But they could be doing a service and they don't even know it. That's how I think of it. I think it's cool. So I like this idea. Because so, we created a tradition. This is like and a we scary carry on movie. A tradition, even though some people have, they have ideas about it that it's all the candy making companies doing and capitalizing off of a, ho a holiday that lets you dress up. And where did trick and treats come from? You know that must have come much later. Um, but still, I'm sure the people from the 700s, if they were around, looking around as ghostly people as ghostly people, they're like, fuck yeah, we started this. And are they sitting there being like, haha, suckers? Or are they sitting there being like, dude, thank you for doing this because you're keeping me in my spot. You're Not only thank you place. for doing this, but I bet you they have a those people, those pagans from the 700s, they're here right now. And they have a fat bankroll. And they're sitting in a high rise watching Halloween go down. And being like... like <laughs> What's the heck gonna happen yo, in this party? Yo, and he and they, he, she, there's a whole crew of them, and they are funding all this bullshit. They're buying up companies and they're making candy because they know what's going down tonight. And all our dumb asses are running around like a bunch of psychos dressing up thinking we're cute and shit. And little do we know, we're basically saving our world from the underworld of crazy ass people that are trying to steal our crops, babe. I agree. I you agree. Know, we need I our mean, crops you protected. Don't, you don't know. You don't know. And that, like, that's how I'm like, wow, that, that blows my mind. Like, what if this tradition that we've carried on for so long that the whole world celebrates, or at least no, it's about from belief. what I know, right? Is it's it? It's about belief. It is. Even though if you didn't believe and you're still dressing up, then that could be a help unbeknownst to the person that's dressed up because they don't have that belief, well, they, they believe like, cool, I get a day off and I get to dress up and be weird. Do you have to believe in what you're doing for you to make an impact? Do you have to be bought in for you to make an impact on someone else's purpose? The answer is no. No, yeah, no. Well, the thing is, is that there are levels, I think, of impact that you may have, but even you never know. Like, you just never know. What that do you was, mean? That was really weird. You're weird. You just know. What does that mean? No, I said you never know. Oh, you never okay. know. This what do you is never a know about? Moment. Are we having a moment? You say you don't need to know. No, you don't. No, it's like you don't. I don't believe that you need to know that you're making an impact. So you're a pawn. Hmm? In that case, you would be a pawn or a, a puzzle piece, a piece on the board serving no purpose but just function because I, struggle. I do agree with what you're saying in fact i know i hire people i manage teams and oftentimes you have people that are committed to something that is not what your purpose and your true commitment is i mean no one is as committed as the owner of a business than the business owner themselves it all comes back on them 
even with the leader of a platoon, the leader of a team, the leader of a squad, some of those team members are committed to something other than that team's success, right? They're just doing their job. But yet, the success happens. Does it happen the same way if they're bought in with purpose? Sort of like this, right? We have no idea what we're doing right now. We're dressed up like a couple damn kooks sitting here having a podcast, enjoying ourselves. And you're right. We could be scaring off the ghosts and the ghouls of multidimensional worlds right now and have no idea that we're actually making that impact. But something tells me that I would need to believe in that in order for me to make the impact. Yet, something also tells me that in a structured environment that I know very well, like teams, companies, right, squads, not everybody has to be bought into the purpose for the success factor to occur. So I'm a bit on the fence about this. Are you bought into the multi-world, multi-dimensional? Are you dressed up to, are you prepared for battle? Are you prepared to, to protect this world tonight, babe? I'm ready for fucking anything. <laughs> She's gangster. Fuck, I don't care. Like, zombie <laughs> come over here. I'm about, all right. I'm fucking ready. I'll fucking break the end of this handle like this. And just hey, and just hey, hey. Out. I believe you. I believe you 100%. But at the same time, like, do I believe in that? Hmm. I'm not going to knock it. I don't know. I haven't done my research, nor have I experimented or anything like that in ghosts and things. Right. So, I'm not sure. Have How? you ever known someone that has been in the presence of a ghost, quote unquote? We'll just use that as a general term for yes. the rest of this podcast for something that is like not in the flesh like us. Sure. A sentient being. Is that right? Is that wrong? Um, ghost. Yeah. Many people. Yeah. Do I believe them? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Their experience is their experience, you know? So I don't know. I've never experienced it. So, of course, it's a little bit, I'm skeptical. However, there have been moments where it's been weird. <laughs> and so I've, but I would always chalk it up and, you know, give an excuse, I suppose. And like just, what? I don't know. Coincidence. Coincidence. Or they're telling a story. Or they were it's faded. It's all in my head. All in my or, head. No, no, I mean me personally having moments. But I'm mm. like, oh, and you don't get the you get the chills because it's cold, you have a glow by, blah, blah, blah. Um, but then when you hear people talk about it and you're like skeptical, but then you hear some stuff that kind of resonates maybe with some experiences that you might have had, it's like, nah, maybe, really? Yeah, mm. nah. You know, you like then you try to, you know, overanalyze it again just to be logical. About that's it. that's good that's the good part about i that. mean that's yeah we should be thinking outside of the box we should be thinking that these are things these things are possibilities yeah that's my opinion anyway i think that it's i'm i'm happy to be open but i am i want i want to experience my own for sure so you're looking to experience that you want to experience it your own. Are you looking to have a, an experience with a ghost? If I told you right now that there was a room right here in Oceanside that had a ghost in it and I was certain of it, would you be ready for that experience? Yeah. That would be a big fat yeah for me too. If you came to me and you were like, dang, babe, I just met a ghost my first response would be, for real? What are you talking, Cray? And then you would say, what? If you to really met a ghost, you? if you really met a ghost, would you not tell me? Oh, baby, I would tell you, but I would be real nonchalant about it, I think. I'd be like, yeah, babe, I met a ghost today. Because I'd be wondering your reaction, and then I'm like, he's not going to believe me, so. 
Maybe I'll just put him in the same room with the ghost without telling him to see if he figures it out. <laughs> you really think I wouldn't believe you, huh? I would believe you. I think you. you would ask me a lot of questions. I would totally believe you. I, my first question would be, would be, take me to it. Take me to your Please. Meter. Will you take me to it? Where was this? Can we go now? <laughs> if I had experienced a ghost, that'd be so cool. Like, actually, I don't know. With the hands like when we touch the person's hand and it walks right through it you know it's transparent but i still see it. but where did so these cool. things come from where did these ideas come from that's the most interesting part i find that when if you could think it it's possible so it's such an interesting concept to hear and believe in and so it's like all these things in movies it always changed my perspective after I started hearing that a lot more it was like if you can think it it could be possible or it's possible it's like wait when you see all the vampire stuff in and you're like is that possible well <laughs> but maybe you never know maybe out not exactly vampiric or whatever but what if you could you know reverse age or something like that and we have a great imagination. Yeah. And I believe that the mind can create the what ifs, answers to what ifs, but it still is mind boggling to me how the face of an alien came to be as a point of reference. It's bizarre to me how the, you know, it, it, I believe that it came from, usually, in, in my opinion, it, it comes from the face or the body of a sea animal. Or an insect. Or an insect. Because you think about it, and the definition of alien is just, really, it's just different. Right. And so when I look at a praying mantis, for instance, perfect alien head. Because you're looking at this thing that's long and gangly and has this big old head way bigger than its body and its arms that go, you know, in a direction that we're not used to seeing because as humans, the only thing we see on a day-to-day -day when we walk around are other humans. And so when you see insects that are a bit rare, if you don't have plants, you won't see them, you know, other things like that. And so like, seeing a praying mantis, like even for me, the first time I saw a praying mantis, like held one in my hand, I was like, holy, and like it freaked me out. Like I got the heebie-jeebies in my whole body, but I was like, don't let go. Like, yeah, this is don't the coolest hurt it. thing ever. For sure. But it is so alien. You're just like looking at it in a way that's, you're in awe of like, how did this create this? And even other things such as even like, I saw a ginormous wild boar once, bro. It looks like a bear mm -hmm. with a flat, like a a pig nose. Like I was just, and the wiry hair reminded me of a werewolf, and it's just, it's so interesting. You're yeah. like, it's not something I'm used to seeing every on a daily basis or even close to a monthly basis. So just to see it once is like, I can understand where people come up with these characters and movies, and it's cool. Yeah, I think yeah. it's pretty cool. It's a combination of things that our creative minds have taken from points of reference throughout yeah. our education or life or, you know, whatever our experience and exposure has been. And then we're putting those together sometimes on accident. Oftentimes we fall into this solution, if you will, sort of like when you're looking at a piece of art and you see something in it and, you know, someone else doesn't see something, the same thing in it until you point it out and then they see it too mm -hmm. right it's yeah. that i feel like that's the same the same principle well it's interesting even just bringing up the whole halloween thing um with it being to like bringing re-bringing it back up in my own mind it you dress up to scare away ghosts i haven't thought that in so long and it's different for different cultures day of the dead and for, you know, Mexican culture, it's like you have, you're celebrating life and you believe that all the ghosts come out of their grades to come and, you know, hang with you as a family, almost like here's a Thanksgiving, 
all families throw a huge feast as though it's Thanksgiving feeding more than just the living. And so I find that really cool and interesting too. For sure. So I think that bringing it all back to like my forefront of my mind, since I haven't thought about that kind of stuff in like, since I used to work at Hollywood Cemetery to go paint faces and sell Day of the Dead style art, you know, which was so long ago. It's like, I always thought, oh, you just dress up and whatever. And I was actually been so over it. But rethinking about it now makes it kind of cool. Our, just like you were saying, it, Halloween, I think it was a few days ago we were chatting with Dave and we were saying, you know, Halloween wasn't really a big deal or what are we doing for Halloween? It's not really a big deal. We work. It's not a thing for us, right? Yeah, not at going all. Going out and going to parties and stuff. We've done it, but yeah. it's not, it's never been a big thing for me. It's a night to get loose. Mm-hmm. And an excuse to get loose. An I excuse like, to you know. get loose, exactly. Yeah. That is what it is, and it has been what it was. If someone had snatched me up back then, whenever I saw Halloween as a an excuse to get loose, and really took me into the grind of what it meant, where it came from, the history, what it meant to the pagans, I think that I would have had an all new experience with it. And all it would take is a little bit of information that I, I you know, I'll be the first to tell you I'm ignorant about holidays because I don't like them in general. Mm. I'm like, that's dumb as hell. People trying to make money, get me out of here. Yeah, I got you. Something crazy gonna happen. And if someone had brought me out to a bonfire and put war paint on my face and dressed me up, you know, with some palm fronds and shit, like peanut butter Falcon, you know, <laughs> I tell you, I would have had a hell of a lot more fun getting down like that than a lot of the years that I got down for Halloween. But now we have an opportunity to see Halloween a little differently. Yeah. Today. I won't forget the time that, I wanted to surf so bad, I couldn't stand it almost. I just had to be in the water, had to be in the surf. And so I drove out to Oregon for Oregon coast for a week. And it was pretty flat and the waves were kind of blown out. And so one night I was just standing there kind of looking out over the water, hoping for waves. Klaus was there. We had a fire going and you know how I make my, uh, my nature calls when I'm surfing, right? Mm -hmm. In the water where I, yeah. I call the waves. <laughs> like, <laughs> you start yeah. putting on seaweed around you. It works. It does. It, it actually works. does work. It brings <laughs> waves, y'all. We were. It works because we believe it. But that's not so important as it seems. We don't need to believe in the purpose for it to work. Well, I'll give you an experience that impacts did my life very interestingly especially as I look back on it I was 17 way too old to be trick-or-treating but was um that's okay honey you know we won't fault you uh -huh. for that one. Uh, I was in Coronado with um my boyfriend at the time and his best friend and we were trying to get like the big candy bars because that's what they do in Coronado. They give you the big fatty like king size bars. And a lot of people did give it to us and a lot of people ran us off. But there was one lady that the only reason why I even knew anything about Halloween was because she was like, you get no treats because you're too old, but I'll give you a trick. And Whoa. she ended up being a psychic and a card reader. And so she ended up telling us the history of you know, Sam Hain and why everybody dressed up. And then oh, she wow. read our palms. And for, I believe it was Sarah. Her name was Sarah. She, uh, she, she had a deaf sister or she has a deaf sister. And so she did a lot with her hands. And so when mm. she got her hands read, the woman, the psychic had said that she's going to be working a lot with her hands and things like that. And as like maybe a translator. And I believe that she ended up doing something similar. But they also said to me that I was going to be very creative. And I was like, because I was not creative at all, at all. They were like, you're going to be using your hands a lot. And I was like, cool, typing. I got that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I know. Because I already had my heart set. Accounting, finance, easy get in there, understand it, and be good. 
and Mm -hmm. corporate jobs kind of was ingrained in my head, you know, so I was like ready. So I had already had my heart set on that idea. And so when this was like, no, you're going to be very creative. I was like, nah. Whatever. Yeah. And then it's so funny. I remember, I remember when I decided to, to quit my job and and be a full-time fine artist. (laughs) And I remember thinking back on that day and being like, whoa. Right. Like she had like, whoa, you know, she was right, you know, and it's like, you know, that's where that first moment experience with like a psychic or something that made me feel like maybe I believed in a little bit of the mystical mysticism there. But it also really, it really impacted me. I must have had that in the back of my mind always that some lady was like, you know, because I didn't even want to paint. I was like, I don't think I'll be good at this, but maybe. And it always had that put like planted a seed in my mind. Hmm. Even if she didn't know or not, you know what I mean? She could have just been tricking me. (laughs) Or maybe that's exactly what was going to happen anyway. Mm. You know? Yeah. Maybe she is a reader, not just a palm reader. Yeah. Maybe she knows. She did know. Not even maybe, huh? I didn't have a lick of tattoos at the time. I was a bare naked baby. Yeah, she had it figured out. She had something figured out because she called us all out and we were just like, all right, we're going back home. Did you look into this? We're going to go to bed. What's that? Did you look into this? Did you like do any research on what variables would cause her from reading a palm to point someone into the direction of creativity through palm reading? I'm just curious because that's that's how I would, that's how I think about it. I'd be like, oh, dang. Okay, now that I'm creative, I wonder well, I what exactly been, she saw. Yeah. You know, and in, in a palm, like what are consistencies in palm reading that would direct someone who's reading palms to be a creator? That's what I would want to know. Well, and at then, 17, that's like the last thing. I'm like, I get it. Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, now <laughs> as we talk about it, I'm going to sure. look it up later oh, yeah. <laughs> because now I'm curious. You know, I'm always trying to understand why, but I get that. Yeah. We're just having some fun. And when she said using my hands, I was like, nah. I thought maybe because I'd, you know, I sang when I was younger. I thought maybe it was something like that. But then when she was like, no, it's going to be creative with your hands. I was like, nah. Spot on, huh? Yeah. Because, yeah. Without question. I think the pagans were on to (laughs) something. That's what I think. I think that your connection with this lady and I think that there's things going on. And how do you get so many people bought into these ideas? How is it that we're still around dressing up like this? That's what I I find very interesting is that we've kept the tradition alive, even though the meaning behind it might have changed Mm. for each and every one of us. Yeah. I don't think it's the not to disagree with you, I agree in that capacity, but I don't think it's the tradition that stayed alive. I think it's the commercialization of it that's kept it alive. For sure. Because we're so far separated from the actual tradition I understand what you mean. But I mean more as something that just happens every year. Eat candy. Every year. Yeah, buy shit, eat candy. Dress up, get crazy, eat candy. Right. You learn your party and you get fat tummies because you're a kid and your parents let you eat more candy at night than yeah. any other day so you're stoked and then you bring it on up to adulthood where there's a shit ton of sugar and alcohol and so we're <laughs> imbibing yeah. <laughs> of course it's like beyond measure because what because we can it's the day for it and Word. people are going to be a little bit more lenient about the way you want to act so yeah that's what i mean by tradition as far as like it happening every year as far as the actual why the belief of dressing up and no i i i think most people probably don't know much right you know but not it's, connected to cool. it yeah not connected and for sure. i think that i would like to share one thing about this that's super spooky if you don't participate you die you become guess, very ill or you die. That's fucked up. Yeah. Don't you put that on anybody. Ricky I'm just Bobby. saying like, don't I'm you just put saying, that on us. For those Halloween haters, <laughs> now that you know, 
from a pagan belief, you would light fires and dress up, right? You would have a town center fire in each house would light a fire and you would burn that fire to its very last ember. You would allow it to burn through. And if you didn't participate and in that, you would bring an ember or something from each household's fire to the community center fire as a support, you know, as a community. A tribute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your contribution to the protecting the community from multi-world ghosts, schools, and spirits. Invasion. That's heavy, man. People come up with some pretty intricate concepts about life as we Do know it. Do you think, too, that... So I have been reading, and we are in Mercury Retrograde, and it is the blue full moon tonight. Mercury is in Retrograde. We have a blue moon, and it's on Halloween. Holy cow. Babe, what are we going to do? We're doing this? Man. I'm going to change my ways. I'm going to change my Halloween ways, baby. I usually don't do much for Halloween in the last few years, so this is changing it up a little bit for me. Yeah. I can tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig deep in my head tonight, and I'm going to try to connect with my wolf spirit, baby. Mm. I'm going to fight off them demons from them multiple worlds with Dave and with Peyton's help. That's right, Peyton. I'm going to need your help tonight. Join me, y'all, in my spirit defeat. No, thank you. I feel like I'm fighting spirits just by being here. Okay. And being dressed up. I like that. I like that. Well, if I discover something, I'll share it. I know. <laughs> I know you will. Babe, 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 babe. Oh, my God. I, I met a ghost like... downstairs in the front yard in the bushes. You got to come down here and see it, I honey. know. If I'm sleeping, I'll be like, peace out. Mofo, tell him to wait till I'm up next time. All right. Fine. <laughs> I want to find tradition in traditions. Like, I find that we are facing tradition defined by commercial business these days. And that's why we don't like it anymore. Yeah. But I think we should. I personally don't like it anymore. It's just, I'm not a big fan of crowds. I'm just not the fan. I, I don't think I ever was. I was, it was always just something to do. Go to Houdini's palace, go to a bar, go somewhere, la la la. And it's just like, why? You know, it didn't make any sense in, that Halloween is has played its crazy pants course for me. However, I am open to other things. Like, never done a podcast on Halloween, so that's kind of cool. And never celebrated a blue moon, blue full moon, since what, 1944? 19 on a years Halloween. On a Halloween. Yeah. Doing a podcast. With my handsome werewolf. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so it's pretty cool all around. I agree. I agree. I'm going to try and take it next level shit after this. Please don't. I'm going to do it. Oh, God. Baby, I'm going to do don't it. Hurt. I'm going to do I it. I feel it already. I'm just saying. I have claws. If I don't support, <laughs> if I don't support the mish, like the tradition mish, if we don't fight those spirits, babe, like, <laughs> we're going to try it out. We're going to try it out. Are you going to do that now? No. Nah. I'll pick you up wherever you are. Time you is right. Time's right. Okay. When the time is right, I will know it. Just be careful in the alleyways. There's a bunch of people down there. You really worried about me in an alleyway right now? I mean, the freaks come out at night. The freaks I appreciate, come out at I appreciate night. the thought and the concern. It's zombie land out there. I like zombie land. That sounds it's fun. It's zombie land out there, Dave. Knows. I ain't trying to be out there. I'm trying to go hang out, be chill, get in my head, get in my mind about this. What does that Try mean? Try and connect the spirits with the multi-worlds. Oh, God. I'm He's just saying. He's take up the whole bed. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say this shit makes me feel real small. Talking about the history of Halloween as we don't really know it. The history of the, there were millions of people that followed that stuff. It's crazy pants. We are nothing. This is so small. 
It's crazy wolf pants. I'm telling you this. We are just so are you small. Wearing pants? No, I didn't think this so. is so small. We are. It's like we're a blip, a <laughs> little tiny dot. Baby, you always think that. That's why I love you. You crazy pants, man. Mm. Now go take your howling outside. We're just a wolf in the wind, babe. <laughs> Stupid. Just a wolf in the wind. Oh, oh Lord. All right. You, you. Happy, happy single. Be Happy, happy.